How's it going everybody, Budget Pokemon here, and in this video I want to have a little price discussion once again, similar to what I did for V-Star Universe, I did back in January. This time we're going to be focusing on a singular card, the Umbreon VMAX from Evolving Skies. This card may just be the most popular and most expensive modern card, and what it did is unprecedented, like nothing like this has ever happened. So this is what I wanted to talk about, it's kind of intriguing. But without further ado, let's get into it. So Evolving Skies released in August of 2021, like one and a half years ago. And when this card was released, I have a web archive page right here from October 6th, which is like two months, about two months after the release of Evolving Skies. This card was sitting at $237 right about there. And when, when Evolving Skies was released, this wasn't even the most expensive card. The most expensive card when when Evolving Skies was released was actually this Rayquaza VMAX right here. That was the most expensive card, but then the Umbreon eventually overtook it at some point. And it is just insane how much how much value it gained over the course of of the release. So essentially you can see here, in March it was still basically like right about the same price as it first was, but then it like slowly, slowly went up. It had a dip here. I was, I would be saying this was because of the reprint, but this doesn't quite line up. I mean, nobody knows how many reprints of Evolving Skies there really were. There has been speculations that a reprint around October, but Judging by the price of of this Umbreon, October doesn't seem doesn't seem reasonable. The reason for that is mainly because Evolving Skies, while it was reprinted, especially the ETBs, it wasn't in a large enough quantity for it to matter. So I have like a Google Docs here featuring all of the pulls. Like someone did an opening of like what ten thousand packs. Yeah, this was it. This is where the Google sheet is from. I'll link it down in the description below, so this is actually very interesting. 10,000 booster packs, and they basically wrote down every single pull they had. And if we check for the Umbreon, let's see if I can... I can search. Yep, there we go. So out of these 10,000 booster packs that were opened, look at this right here. We have in total 11 Umbreon VMAXs pulled, the alternate arts. That equals to a pull rate of 1 in 1807, which is ridiculously low. Which is why I also have like pull rates for Hidden Fates up right here. The Charizard GX, we're gonna get to that in a second, but let's focus on this one first. So 10,000 booster packs and only 11 cards. This card is so insanely rare, like you wouldn't believe it. Here we have another one. This is with with a picture. Slightly different numbers, but they they do correspond in in some way. You have the Umbreon VMAX in one out of 1,666 booster packs. And the Rayquaza VMAX is actually rare, which is why I was referring to it earlier. This was the most expensive card when, when Evolving Skies first came out. And it kind of does make sense. But the card is so rare that it's almost impossible to pull. And just look at the listings right here. I have the listings filtered by, by Near Mint and English and that's it. Shipped to the United States. Well, don't worry about this. I have set it to the United States just so we can see every single offer. If I set it to like Germany, it, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't find anything. So here we go. The cheapest offer is from someone with 0% feedback whatever. Um, usually, I mean, if they have pictures like this guy, I wouldn't be too concerned. I'm not familiar with TCG Player. I'm assuming they have something similar in place like Card Market with their trustee service, where the seller only gets their money upon you confirming arrival. So honestly, if they have pictures, I wouldn't be too concerned. So let's just say $500 is currently the market price on TCG Player at least. That corresponds well with Card Market as well right here. Cheapest offer right here, someone with three reviews. You know, wouldn't be too... Wouldn't mind it too much. Just ask them for some pictures and you'll be fine. So 500 euros. So the price is about equal right here. I have another window right here. This is just from, from December 2022. So this is not too long ago, but if we just search for the first Near Mint English version right here, we have 459. 
So it already went up another $40 in the span of like three months. And this is really bad. Like this trend, I see this trend continuing for for really, really long time. Let's just check this page right here. For all right here. So this is where, where they started getting some some prices for this car. This is right around the release, which corresponds as well as I have said, to $120 when it first was released. And it actually held there. It actually dipped down to about 180 it looks like. Until it then picked up a lot of steam and it never went down. Like up until this point, up until like December 21, it, it was, it was, I don't want to say affordable because $180 is still a lot of money. But up until that point, it was kind of affordable compared to the prices now. Now don't bother, don't, don't, don't look at the grades. We're going to, we're going to talk about those in a second here. Those are like a completely different topic, but yeah. It just went up and got a lot of steam right here, 567. Dipped down a little bit, but then just picked it up. This might actually be when when the small reprint of Evolving Skies actually um, got into hands of people. People opened it and opened more of this card. This would explain this slight dip, but then again it went back up because basically it was a very, very small reprint of the booster boxes and the ETBs. And that is not enough to like flood the market with this card. Talked about the pull rates. Let's talk about the graded versions of this card. And one card that we have to talk about like absolutely is this right here, which was sold a little while ago, like February 20, something like that. It was sold on PWCC. That's like an an auction site, as far as I'm concerned, an auction site for like Pokemon cards, greater Pokemon cards. And it sold for $12,000. Now, don't get me wrong, a black label is basically the best grade you can get. It's a triple t or it's a quadruple 10, which means the card is, it's perfect. There is no flaw with the card. But you might think $12,000, that is a lot, and it is a lot. If you look, this is the the um, the cert of this card just typed in here. And if you if we look at this one, there is 53 perfect tens graded with BGS, and that is a lot if you think about it. There are a thousand graded in total with BGS, but 53 black labels, that is kind of a lot, honestly. And I think. Certain people that, that have a PSA 10, which, by the way, PSA 10s, can see here, usually sell around $800, 800 860 we have 900 here, 1000 here, so I would say anywhere from like 800 to 1000 is where a PSA 10 copy sells, and I, I think the people that have PSA 10s might actually considering like cross grading to see if they can get a BGS 10 black label, which would bump up the value of the card to like an enormous amount. Now I think, I think this is overvalued, like 100%. There is no way, no way a modern card should be worth $12,000. Those are prices that I would consider paying for vintage cards, for like a a first edition Mewtwo or whatever, Blastoise, Venusaur, maybe not Charizard, I don't know, Charizard is kind of weird, because like, price for Charizard is like all over the place. That is, that is insane, and I'm not sure this price will gonna hold. Like, with, when people are cross-grading and we get more and more black labels, and people sell these black labels, Obviously, since there's more of them, the price will go down. But this is like kind of like maybe this was the first one. This is why the price was so high. But this is not worth it, in my opinion. That is not worth it. I also have, which I mentioned earlier, the Charizard GX right here. It's from Hidden Fates. And Hidden Fates was released in, what, 2019? And this is kind of the card that, that people were chasing in 2019. This is like another really, really 
popular card. Of course, it's Charizard. Charizard might just be the most popular Pokemon. This is kind of the card that was the Umbreon VMAX of its time, if you want to think about it like that. Because the card was so popular and so expensive, but it wasn't anywhere, anywhere as difficult to pull as the Umbreon. We have the, the year right here. We, we can see the year actually it went down quite a bit. This is only from 2020, but now it's going down a bit. And I think that trend for the Umbreon, it depends on a whole lot of things if that's going to happen for the Umbreon. I'm going to get to that in a second. Charizard right now, it's a 300 euro card. The pull rates though from Hidden Fates, if we just scroll down to the 49, Charizard, that's six cards pulled and he opened 2,350 sets or 2,000... 350 packs, sorry. And he pulled it like six times. That is a higher pull rate than the Umbreon. Like, you, you, you can't even grasp just how rare the Umbreon is. This is nicely with the picture right here. One in 391 packs. If we compare that, we just go back to the Umbreon, which is one in 1,666 packs. That is a difference. Now you have to keep in mind though that Hidden Fates is a special set. This isn't a main expansion set. So naturally the pull rates are gonna be better in like in a special set like this. Obviously. But still, that is insane. The other card that was kind of big when when Vivid Voltage came out was the, the Chonkachu. Like the the Rainbow Pikachu. And Vivid Voltage, similar to, to Evolving Skies, had a reprint around the same time. Like, Vivid Voltage was printed printed a lot, actually. Pretty sure you can still find ETBs for, for MSRP right now. But that was kind of the card that, that people were chasing um, at the time. The pull rate for the Chonkachu, though, was 2 in... How many packs did he open? 2,184. So that's a pull rate in 1 in 1092, which is similar, but it's still better than the Umbreon VMAX. This card at the time though, this was also still pretty expensive. Like when it first came out, Vivid Voltage, it was, it was selling for a lot of money and it has since come down. As you can see here, the price trend for a ungraded copy is downwards right now. And that is because Vivid Voltage was reprinted in such a large, large volume. Unlike the Evolving Skies. So I think it, it really highly depends. Like this card, the problem with this card is, as I've talked about the BGS Black Label, if this card gets any lower, then people who want to grade the card are just going to be snatching it up. If this card gets below, like, let's say 400 or something, people are just gonna keep buying it and buying it and grade them trying to get the Black Label, which, I mean, in turn will also reduce the value of a Black Label because there's more of them, but they would still gain a very huge plus. I mean, just imagine you buy this card for 500 right now, you get it graded as a Black Label and then, then sell it for 12,000. Which isn't gonna happen, by the way, don't do that. Like, it's really, really difficult to get a black label. So just to wrap things up right here, will the Umbreon VMAX go down in price? Well, the answer is it depends on a lot of different things right here. Well, the most obvious thing it depends on is if the Pokemon company decides to reprint Evolving Skies again. Which I think they will. The question is only in how much of a volume, like, how big is the volume of the reprint gonna be? If it is similar to the Vivid Voltage reprint, where you can, right now, still find ETBs for MSRP, then I definitely see this card going down. The second thing it depends on, which I haven't seen people talk about a lot, is how well Scarlet and Violet will do as an expansion. And... Umbreon is a very popular Pokemon, so there's no doubt in my mind that we are going to get another amazing card of Umbreon in the near future. I'm thinking maybe like an, a secret art rare EX version of Umbreon, because those ones like the Gardevoir, which is coincidentally releasing in Scarlet and Violet in English for us, 
Um, that is a really beautiful card. And if they continue doing cards like that, and do one for Umbreon, I can definitely see this coming down as well, because people... People will, like, flood to the new market, if you will, and try to get that card. And then maybe this card will go down. But as it stands right now, I don't see this card coming down anytime soon. Like, this card, if, if there isn't a big reprint, and if people are not getting an other good Umbreon card from Scarlet and Violet, this card is going to continue to climb to, to reach ridiculous amounts. There's also a third option, which is kind of... which is, well, it's not really an option. But the whole stick with, with the modern market being very volatile. Like, if we, if we have another, what do we call it? A, a hobby exodus or something, people don't like the new expansion, they keep pulling out. Not a whole lot of people buy Pokemon. If it gets unpopular, if you will, which I don't see happening, then maybe this card would also go down. But that is an option that I, I wouldn't even consider. I wouldn't even consider that option. But there we have it. That was my, my little discussion about the Umbreon VMAX. Um, I hope I covered everything that I wanted to, and I hope you, you did enjoy this video. If you did, then a like would be appreciated. If you didn't enjoy it, then by all means, dislike the video and tell me in the comments what you didn't like so I can try to fix that for future videos. I'm, I'm really open to criticism here. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace.